locked it in, and it's going into game two. EG currently leading 1-0. So, Tinker aside, we talked about the Tinker a little bit. Maybe questionable, but overall, do you think Secret's in, in a better place right now where they can play the laning phase a little bit more comfortably? They, they definitely have a like very solid winning condition now with the Tinker. So, which is way better than last draft already. So, I think this game they definitely have a better shot. Cap, what about you on the other side as well for EG? I mean, it's, it's scary just simply for the fact that I am not entirely sure if Team Secret's going to be able to have just enough team fight to stop evil geniuses who have this like very strong laning phase into a push lineup that is going to pressure Tinker a lot. You hate losing those outer towers early if you're a Tinker. Yeah. All right, and last. Uh, 1437, your thoughts as we wrap up I mean, the draft here. I, I just want to see a game three, so <laughs> I hope Secret wins this one. <laughs> the heart of a Dota fan more than anything. As we're getting ready here, we do see... Oh, that's Boba. a real fan favorite. EG Boba. All right, well, it looks like, Boba, we're going to be able to hear from you about the draft with Casey. That's you. Hi. <laughs> Tell us how you feel about how that draft went compared to game number one. Well, we're going to... There's a small chance we might play a game three, so I can't say too much, but I think uh, game one, we're very confident. This game, we're also very confident. I think, uh, I don't want to jinx it though. So, what am I supposed to say here? What's, what's supposed to be correct for me to say in this? We're going to be confident. We're going to do well. We're going to play our hearts out. Yeah, and then, and then you have to say, I just want to thank everybody for making this possible. I want to thank you all for making this possible. All of, all of the sports, please. I love Vancouver. That's Yay, good Canada. Too. Yay, Canada. Yay, Dota. Yay, Dota. is that we can be looking for with the way this game is going to go? Um, I think you can look at both the four positions. I think uh, both Crit and Yapsor, they've been playing really well. The generals are really good. I think probably the mid lane is going to be, I don't know, everyone's really good in this game. So, yeah, just look at everything. It's going to be a good one no matter what, Bulba. Thank you. No problem. Best of luck. Thank you. Well, as you can see on your screen, the game is underway. This is game two. Toby and Sid takes away. Thanks a lot. Yeah, that's right. Our interviews are scripted, but the games are not. Uh, here we go. EG will do the best they possibly can. Sid, uh, what do you think about the Tinker Fifth? Who doesn't love Bulba? I, um, <laughs> I, I'm not so sure. I see this weakness in the secret lineup that they have a really big problem dealing with BKBs. Um, when you pick core combinations like this, where you have Tinker and Necrophos, and you, in addition to that, put your Mirana on position three, uh, obviously, in this patch, you never know, like, Fata might take off and become the true one from the offlane, but um, I think it's really important for Secret's lineup that there's, there's this awkward timing, right, where Necrophos and Tinker, they want to farm, and Tinker especially wants to farm a lot, and that means that you give the enemy time to get the BKBs. And once they come out for EG, you have all these BKB heroes with Draora. You're definitely going to see three BKBs in this game on Dra Drow, Gyro, and Weaver, unless EG get run over or crush Team Secret. And the, really, that's my biggest concern. I like the panel suggestions more than this Tinker. I think the Meepo would have been amazing. I think Arc Warden could have also been good. And the third one that they mentioned was, is not in mind right now. Uh, that was one more phrase. Basically, so. it was going to be good. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not really on this Tinker hype train, so. But we're going to uh, see how it goes. Crit, body blocking up a little bit by Puppy. Ran out of the Ignite. Also decided not to just block the tree line. This is already a TP away, so Fly will go up to the top lanes. So it's going to be a 2-1-2. Two, two. We're going a little bit uh, standard at the beginning. And we'll see if EG's strength in their laning phase from game one is able to transition over to game two. And we'll see how this mid lane battle goes. The Gyrocopter, not exactly what we were expecting from Evil Jeans, as that's their fifth pickup. So, yep. the unexpected versus the unexpected equals mid lane. Yeah, and this should be a Tinker favorite matchup, so... Uh... Similar to last game where mid one had a good laning stage, that could definitely happen again. You just uh, take advantage of the higher range that you have against this gyrocopter and you just harass him out. Well, curious to see what mid one skill build will be. Tinker is one of those heroes that can build in many different ways. Uh, you definitely want some level of march, but sometimes you see players prioritize the nukes, which is a slightly less farm intensive, but way more lane dominating build. And sometimes you see them in less favorable matchups, just go four and march of the machines and try to jungle. Uh, to get a fast boost of travel. Yeah, so well, both after, options are available. After we talk about how much Team Secret need to actually have influence inside the lanes, going for that lane dominance build sounds a little bit more viable. Yep. I also want to keep my eye on this uh, little guy we're watching up at the top lane. Obviously the future winner of the Arcana, if everything goes according to plan. 
Uh, he got my votes. I think, uh, <laughs> I think Yapsor has already pimped out enough. I don't know if he needs an Arcana. <laughs> just look at that. Yeah. Okay, I think that's like all the coolest items this hero has. Okay. Yeah, he's, he's got everything. If he doesn't have it, gift it to his Steam account. He'll be happy to accept all donations. Bottom lane, there's a good stun out from Crit as S4 gets very aggressive onto Ace. He's down to two Tangos and they made the most of the chance of Puppy moving off the lane, coming up for the two minute rune. At least this time around, it looks like Secret are just already doing better in their lanes. They are have a, they have a much better start for Fata. Their safe lane, there was it was close to being a Necrophos kill, but I still think Ogre and Necro can hold their own in this lane against these two. And as we said, the mid lane is favored for mid one. So it is technically possible here that Secret could win all three lanes, and that's the kind of thing that they're going to need in this matchup. They already forced Fly back to base. He's done a long walk with his Undying all the way back here. In the meantime, obviously it's going to be free farm for Fata as Drow Ranger just can't come close to the wave. The Absar is not letting him pull. Yeah, that's that dangerous thing. Bottom lane, perfect body blocks up. He doesn't have a champ, but he's got an illusion. s 4 has got six charges and he will go down. Puppy will club him. And get the first blood for Team Secret. Leaving Crit all by his little lonesome on that off lane. Crucial for them in this to, to do well early on. Like a... Uh, I'm still, I'm still really looking toward the BKBs in this game. I know it's really early to talk about it, but it definitely is on the minds of the EG players. So if you're secret and you can snowball this laning stage and get Tinker and Necrophos super strong before those items come out, that's like the ideal timing for you. Taking these mid-game team fights around the 15-minute mark before EG are truly online with that. Tinker and Necrophos are both exceptional heroes at that stage if they do well in lanes. Do you actually think EG should sacrifice earlier items to get to these BKBs, or do we still need a lot to have have a lot of the utility items? You definitely need to get build-up items. If you rush BKBs, you run the risk of just getting oh, out of S4 dead again. Oh. Bottom lane. Getting the Fata treatment from last game. Yeah. Does he have his TP ready? Uh, he does not. He TP'd down before. S4, oh. at least uh -oh. said, as you said in game one, uh, Weaver can get back to the lane nice and quickly, but this is level one Shikuchi. It's still going to take a while. Yeah, it's a pretty long cooldown. That's kind of a switcheroo from last game. He's doing better than Fata was last game, but he is not doing hot either. That's for sure. Bana's also got a lot of extra help on this top lane. Go telekinesis into Arrow. That's what they threw into Fly just then. He's out of consumables. One. one, lasers, and Samail. Obviously, the big miss chance can't get anything more in. Poppy was hoping to rotate in and help him out, but it's a long walk back. Mid one's actually going all the way back to Fountain. So, Puppy, hey, you get some levels in mid lane. Double damage rune. He can play up against some mail. This does, however, mean that S4 gets a lot oh, of top space lane. bottom. Fane Bolt, perfect. With the star fall as well. Telekinesis arrow once more. Yep, so and Fata combination and 20 seconds until Shrine is up. I'm sure Fata's upset after last game. He's got a point to prove in this one, so expect to see him trying to play really aggressive and just outplay EG in lanes, showing that last game was a fluke. The fact he's already got his bottle on the off lane is the yep. best thing that could have happened for him. He's going to pick up both the bounty runes on the top. S4 is already moving into position for the bounty runes on bottom. So it will, it will be a two for two trade off, but Fata at least can give some charges. To Mel mid. Being bullied a bit by Puppy, I would imagine he's going to rotate off the lane now that mid one is back. He wants solo experience here. Yep. Yeah. And again, Samel seems to be having a little bit of a harder time. He doesn't have the consumables. He went double Wraith Band as well as the Fairy Fire, so this bottle's a little bit off. He flies out another Mango and a South, but Samel's already in a position where he may consider uh -oh. using that because mid one's got so much burst damage that Samel backs up. There's the Fairy Fire burn. Two and he was holding the, the level two rockets. Yep. If Laser was ready there, mid one would have got the kill. But Sumail accounted for it, backed off, and instead of using his flask, he will go and take that bottom shrine. It looks like S4 and Crit have no need for it. He can use it alone. Damage from the magic missile on the bottom lane. Oh. Ace is loving it, but then he loves the Ghost Shroud. Into the regeneration, still hasn't got the bug off him. S4 does heavy amounts of damage with this, and with a wave of terror, it's so much negative armor. The Necrophos just cannot survive. I think Puffy has been away from bottom for too long. I think this little move into mid that he made was fine, but he absolutely needs to help out his Necrophos. This big advantage that they built bottom is kind of diminishing now. Remember, S4 was level 2, minute 4, and now he's the same experience as the Necrophos. So, in these last two minutes, EG have kind of full-on recovered this lane that they were doing really poorly in. It's going to get worse as well on that bottom lane. Once the Dread Ranger hits level 6, you'll have so much extra damage, but his crit's movement so quickly into the mid, make the most of the call down with the, with the Rocker Barrage. The TP support comes way too late and even gets cancelled. They just cannot reply quick enough. I'm really impressed with how many denies Sumail has in this mid lane mainly. He has 13 denies playing against the Tinker. That is not easy to do as a gyrocopter. And Sumail, 
just uh, showing that he's one of those best laners in the world here. I still don't think this lane should be going this well for the gyro. You obviously have you have some tools, right? You can play the flat cannon, you can try to get Sia. Yep, but... Top lane, fly in trouble. He's got a soul rip available. Not enough follow-up damage. Arteezy's hitting pretty heavily into Fada. And Yamsaw's not ready to really stop him. They bullet him out again, though. So this is more space for the dueling of secret. They're trying. Oh, arrow. Arteezy is fast enough to sidestep. And we'll get back to farming. And now, we need to remember in this game, there is oh. a drow. So when Arteezy hits level 6, the other heroes on the map pro get propelled a lot. Vengeful support, the Weaver offlane, as well as the Gyro get a massive influx of damage. Mm -hmm. And when Arteezy is level 6, this top lane is actually successful. He can rotate off to the jungle, start farming the Dire Triangle on the bottom half if he really feels unsafe in the top area. And they can just leave a support to sit there, get some experience, maybe you die, and that's okay, as long as Arteezy is farming and their ranged heroes are having a good game. There's just so many heroes off the lanes. Like, Undying went back, Samael went back. Look at this. And Samael even TPs actually. in so early. Like, he only got three quarters of his, of his mana pool when he arrived in the mid lane. Yeah, looking for the rune, not getting it. His bottom. Oh, perfect stuns. They don't have level six, however. Scythe is not up. For the Necrophos with the bug on him. One more Death Pulse will do the work, and S4 will fall. He's able to claim him. Crit. Okay, they'll get rid of the bugs finally. Yep. Getting that ogre back into the lane solves the problem. Multiple Samales, illusion rune for him. He's gonna try and play the funny game. The two of them together make it look like the illusions are moving to the, towards the bottom lane, but it really is the real Samael with the cooldown available, and Ace is already starting to back off. Nice ping out from Yapsor. I think he realized that this is indeed a real gyro. Samael is trying to conceal it, but it's starting to get more and more obvious from the mid lane position now. It's just AFK at the tower. Yeah. It gets pinged by Chris like, Move your illusion, it might just work. This, this illusion's not, not doing work. anywhere near enough damage to be real. They know exactly what's happening here. Cute attempt from Samael, but this time around it does not work out, and I think it's time for him to rotate off the lane. He lost quite a bit on this, though. He has cooldown on his TP, so has to run all the way back to mid after running to bottom. And basically what this has done is put no mid one ahead on the gold in the mid lane. Yeah, and mid one being ahead in gold means BTs will arrive a lot sooner, and then you get this very global presence harassing Tinker. So you talked about Evil Genius is having this power once Dro hits six. Now she has it. Can they inflict enough damage? Can they get, should they be ganking up mid one to try and delay the BTs? Because once Global Tinker's online, I'm wondering just how effective that push is going to be from EG. I think you play around S4 right now. You use this Weaver having 120 damage from the Drow. Uh, well, in total, that's not unreasonable. <laughs> um, and, and try to try to play to his strength here. Looks well, like what they're doing. Under the but Reaper. Wall. Where's the Reaper's side? This is going to better come down. He needs oh, to... Oh, no! got it off. The timing. Ace was trying to interrupt the time lapse. Our puppy has no other choice but to TP out. The Death Pulse gives him enough life to survive. Ace being there for his teammate. But now they're in trouble. Yapsaw will fall up on the top lane to Arteezy. Ace has to go shroud. But his negative armor is dropping quickly with the wave of terror. Crits coming in deep with the magic missile will connect. The buff will fall off. But it won't matter. The real one's there to run straight through him. And they got the kill on the oh, yeah. Yapsor Rubik top with Arteezy claiming that last hit. So this lead that uh, EG, or rather that Secret, were building is now diminished. They were 2,000 gold ahead, and now we're almost back to an even game. Profos is... I feel like it's a bit of a shame when you look across how Secret's lanes went, how... How oh, this Necro has fallen off relatively. Oh, bottom lane, Yapsor on crit. He's so low, crit, 28 HP. He'll TP out in the trees, and Yapsor, Moonlight Shadow will protect him. He's got Shikuchi. 10 stick charges. Oh, He's S4. hiding in the small camp. The bug disappeared, and S4 ran the wrong way. For a moment, it looked like he had the right read there. Yapsor's going to solo burn Shrine, because, hey, yeah, you know what? He's core. You can say it, Toby. He's greedy. <laughs> it's okay. Okay, He's not going to offend are, anyone, you, you know, him. You, you played with him. You yeah. definitely know. Like, oh, shrine. <laughs> For me? <laughs> yep, sure, take it. Yeah, I mean, nobody else needed it anyway, so why not? Might as well burn it there. Uh, TZ's gone jungle. He's just trying oh, to keep himself lane. safe he's from any in trouble. Attack. They're going to yep. dive him with Tombstone. He is screwed here. Yeah, he's got the ghost trying to buy a little bit more time. Flies okay. a little unhealthy, <laughs> but okay, it doesn't matter. The call down, so much damage with Rocket Barrage. Gyrocopter is one of the best carries against Necrophos in this stage of the game just because you really don't want to go Shroud, but you have to when these physical damage heroes come in, especially the Draura. Jaro just solos him through the shroud. Like this level four barrage plus call down takes him from full HP to zero. Well, you got what you're asking for to, to play around S4's Weaver. S4 now actually has a TP towards the mid lane because Yapsaw, Puppy, and oh, good oh, nice Gus actually stops mid one from getting the instant march of the machines down, which is there now. So S4 
probably not want to stand here and fight. Look at this for tickling now. It's like, oh, I lost my superpower. <laughs> when Drow's dead, he's so much less scary. <laughs> Funny There's thing the is, travels. too, with the, uh, yeah, BT to run, the tier one town fell to Fada. We kind of forgot about this Mirana, and you can't. He's number one in the net worth, well, ahead, well ahead of Arteezy. This is, this is a beautiful start compared to game one. This is the dream. This is the trade-off that you take as a team when you pick Drow in this patch, I feel. She's such a weak laner that you can't expect to win that lane, and you are hoping to win the other two. But since the bottom lane didn't go that well for EG, they're not in as nearly a dominant position as they would have liked to be. This Fata... Net worth, I think, is to be expected, honestly, in this kind of game. But the other core is doing a bit better, maybe, than EG were hoping. Puts them a bit on the back foot. Yeah. But with that movement onto top lane, Arteezy has to come to defend it. EG's just scrambling a little bit. S4 is the man having the best time, which is not really a great thing to say when he has exactly the same net worth as the Necrophos. He needs to be part of these fights, which is about to happen in mid. Samael and Crit rotate around the back. Ace is becoming the punching bag. Oh, and gets the again. Ghost Shroud off, but he just amplifies himself. Death Pulse is available. So he has to, like, he sustains for an extra half a second? He used, he even leveled up Ghost Shroud to have longer duration on it to get another heal out. He, I think he had a Death Pulse and uh, a one with a lot of charges on it. He still died. And they also used Moonlight there, I believe, yeah. So that's not available for two minutes. This is a great, great pickup for EG, especially if they end up getting the tower here. And S4 is rotated in behind oh, them. Oh, Swap on the Yapso. He'll get the pick up and throw it back down again. And he actually steals Swap, tries to get away, but S4 is already oh, waiting up. And missile. he's looking for mid one as well. Tinker. Oh. There's the time left out for S4. Mid one did not account for that at all. Basically, the homing missile was flying toward Yapsar, and he died in its switched direction onto the Tinker, and S4 immediately picks up on that. He's like, great, Ooh. free kill. s down falls in the wrong position. Fly trying to deny himself up to the Centaurs, but no. Even if the Centaurs super the last bit of damage in, the Reaper's Scythe claims the kill. Oh. Just... Now S4 is the top net worth in his team all of a sudden. Remember oh. we said, oh, he's yeah, only he, on net worth level? Well, he was sixth on the board. He now he's got all the way up. 800 gold from those two kills mid, and look at that. He almost has the... Dragonlance. So this is a build that has become really popular in this tournament compared to previously. In the past, you'd see Weavers sometimes go for Lincoln's build-up, sometimes they would go for bigger items. We've seen Deso rushes, we've seen Maelstrom rushes in the past, and generally here, uh, because of the emphasis on the early mid-game, we see these Weavers go for the Dragonlance into Maelstrom, just really amping up that 15 to 20 minute timing and being super strong at that. You even add a Drower on top of that, S4 is going to be a beast in this game. What S4 is waiting for? He's got the Observer Ward down. Maybe friends. Yeah, uh, probably waiting for a little bit of backup. They want to dive and take this tower with a little four tombstone. I'm pretty sure. And that tombstone is not getting brought down unless Fata's here with leap attacks and the bloodlust. Yep. And then Tink is also, also needs to be there at the right time. But Weaver having this double damage rune. Well, Ace runs down, not again. He's got the bugs on top of him, so Ace, no way to really survive. Well, underneath the tower, the Tombstone has already been planted down. Yapso is able to steal Decay, not Tombstone, so runs up the hill and away. But Ogre's already down for the count. S4 in the tree lines, they're under the cover of oh. March of the Machines. So Team Secret feel pretty good. The arrow just barely missing out, but Arteezy staying with objective base gaming. The tier one tower needs to fall. S4 with the double damage helps to make it so. A DD on Weaver was really good there. So what you see is S4 is not expecting to kill his Necrophos. He knows he can't get the kill, but what he does is he zones him off the back of the fight. The team is then able to easily protect the Tombstone when Necrophos does not join that fight. And, well, they end up getting that tower. And did they get a puppy kill to go with it? They did. And that went to some mail. So claiming a little bit of gold for himself as They're well. They're gonna find Puppy once oh. again. Crit there with a stun. Puppy was hoping to do a bit of a warning mission, ready for this fight on bottom lane. He starts to tank now as the pickup from Yamsol and the throw back. Yamsol, what's he gonna be able to steal? Absolutely nothing. He died before the steal can reach him. And EG are now, they're in the driver's seat. They've really taken over the tempo of this game. And I honestly, I think this is just the nature of having Necrophos and Tinker together oh, is that he will give these openings. He's not going to get this kill. Yeah, he really No isn't. dagger. He cannot chase down Arteezy. He will be fine. Dropping a ward even. A little bit of extra fantasy points if you have Arteezy there for Ob's Ward's planet. <laughs> I do not. Classic. <laughs> um, but yeah, this... Uh, this EG lineup now is looking really strong, right? They're going to build in toward this timing. They got over this difficult stage in the game where the lanes didn't go too well, and now Secret, they still need so much farm. Like, Necrophos and Tinker need to build up these items. Tinker is not ready yet. He needs a dagger minimum, probably also a lens or whatever item he chooses to go for afterwards. And at that point, those BKBs, they're starting to work on them soon. Weaver will finish the lands, go into the Maelstrom. So Mail is currently only the recipe away from his. 
And you imagine Drow for Arteezy will be going for one as well after that Shadow Blade. So right now, everything is coming up EG. The only thing they still have to worry about is the amount of damage that can come out of Farda. He's building in towards Commander style, so yeah. dodge abilities available. EG go for Rosham. They don't have the greatest lineup for this. The Tombstone buys them the ability to do it just because the Undying Minions Undying's are able ultimate. to tank for Rosham. But Drow's taking a very long time to get there. And you kind of need RTZ's damage to do this Scanning properly. Out. Now, yep, yeah, scan is out. No one's going to hit it. The Courier is flying in, and they're actually going to claim it. Yeah. Team Secret are not there in time, and do they really have a great way to counter it anyway? Uh, they could have maybe helped this if they got Tinker in position with two marches, but since he doesn't have a dagger, it's very difficult anyway to position himself properly. And EG, they just take advantage of the two key things they have to kill Roshan with. They have Minus Armor from Venge, and they have the Damage Amp from Undying's Ultimate Flesh Golem. A lot of scribbles coming around that mid lane. Once again, Fly trying to command the troops. Control up the Radiant Jungle, make sure Tinker doesn't have the room to farm. We have an Aegis the Immortal, so push down the lanes. And they're not really getting that much up on top lane. Arteezy's waiting. I'm wondering if Puppy lends a stun. Here comes the Mass TPs in. In fact, it's all five heroes moving to the top. Farda throwing out the arrow, hoping to catch out Arteezy, but he's hiding in the tree lines. No TP oh. scroll on the Drow Ranger. Maybe the reason why they think they've got this. The TP just got delivered, but Arteezy, he starts to burn it. Do they see him in time to leap up? The stuns are available, and Arteezy will fall. And he'll nice also grab. give away Gust. Sure. That is a pretty good steal in this game. It's really, really good against Weaver. And in the right situation, can be nice against the Jar of Samil. However, his BKB will be flying out now, though. So, will be up. Still, it's a grab. It's something for Secret. They grab a core kill. Mm -hmm. Team still... Secret are standing on top of that Observer Ward. So if EG want to defend this Tier 2 tower, they may have the vision to do so. Yep. Either that, they have the vision like to understand this is not a good tower to defend. Yeah, Secret, Secret's ward behind the tower is really good though, and they, they have a very good read on what EG are doing. They will just be giving this up. This tower is very difficult to defend in a 5v4 situation, so they're just going to let it go and um, keep pushing out the lanes. So Sumail is taking care of mid, he'll go back there in a second while RTZ, or sorry, S4 is pushing out bottom. Oh, puppy. Bloodlust for a little bit of movement speed, they'll swap and stun and straight back into Sumail. Arrow will not reach in time to help anybody. S4 taking the bottom tower. Nothing like a bonus 59 damage from a Drow Ranger onto a 120 damaging S4 to make things work. The laser will cause a couple of problems. He didn't realize the sentry ward was up. Oh, That's why Yasuo is going to get the pickup and just push him back with the gust up. Break the Aegis the Immortal. Time lapse of all things were stolen. Here comes your arrow. Perfect. No! The timing from Fado was an inch away. You could clip the antennas with this. Well, he dropped the sorry at least. Well, that's something Yapsor didn't get the spell that he was hoping for. He got the time lapse. He definitely wanted Shukuchi in that situation. Uh, oh. They are really just staying on Puppy's butt. They're going to go underneath the tier one town with a rocket barrage. Samel. It's a very, very simple kill for him. This is actually one of Ogre's worst matchups in terms of playing against carries. Uh, the gyrocopter is super annoying just because he's not, you know, the way Ogre plays in this early mid game is that you feel like you can't come close to him and just man fight him, but Gyro just oh. brings him down so fast. Yeah, so it gets a quick pick and drop down A to the mail. blade mails, trying to make him kill themselves. He almost does it with a side fly. He will fall down. It wasn't to the Reaper side, however. But EG get what they were looking for. It was Yapso underneath the Observer Ward that was on the hill that saw over the tree line to get that initiation off. EG will be very happy with that. They got the kills and they still had Arteezy just pushing out top, so he will take in that tier one. Already working on the tier two. Do have mid one TPing and he is going for that lens. Curious to see what his secondary item will be afterwards. It will be a Hex or an Aghanims or maybe even a Shiva this game, but I don't think that's the way to go. Still has a lot of room to grow though. And EG, they just keep they just keep having this good grip on the map. The D ward from Puppy does come in at least, so they get rid of one of them. Yep. But EG with the deep wards, they have very good information on the map. Puppy's looking for the hill. I wonder if he throws another one down to his south. He's thinking about it. And yeah, he does. He found the other observer ward. He can celebrate by consuming the term, term of knowledge now. I think he wants to give it to someone else. Give it to mid. Yeah, we need mid one to be buffed up a little bit more. Can Ogre even read? Oh, looks like he can. Oh, maybe he's going to pass it on. Let's Only see. one of the heads. Oh, he wants the GPM taunt. I think he's going to take it himself. There. There. So, 90 GPM. This was buffed fairly recently. Ogre used to have 60 GPM on this talent line, but the 90 GPM was a nice little buff to the hero. Obviously, a hero that had a hard time finding farm and scaling. See Puppy running around with a 12 CS. Uh, 
most of the time just used as a bloodlust bot and a support that is strong in lane, but now you can actually get items and get that, for example, the force staff for your team with a glimmer cape of that little bit earlier. Sometimes you can even get really greedy and go for an axe later on in the game. S4. Yeah, they see him, but they don't want to reveal the fact they know detection. Sentry, Sentry Ward is down. Time lapse is available. S4 is able to use it, but then again, the pickup. Yapsaw is there, and they slam down S4. Nicely done. They coordinated that very well. Knowing he would time lapse, Yapsaw was standing where the Weaver was earlier. Gets that instant lift. And I think, did he even steal? He stole Shikuchi too. Yep. So, very happy with that one. Yeah, this is uh, the dream ability if you're a Rubik. Such fast movement oh, speed as you get in close. The arrow will fly a straight, but into the tree lines, they'll see some L pick up and gets the call down into a BKB. Oh, and no. Team Secret, it was a dream steal, but now they're losing everything. Ace will have a little bit more of a heal, but that blade mount does not protect him. Evil Genius is just pushing back Team Secret. But there is still problems. It's the fact that you have this never-ending spam coming in from the Tinker that just makes it difficult for EG to move forward. Is he going to smoke fly? this or no? Is fly? he? Thinks How about it. Um, okay, not valuable enough. Uh, yeah. <laughs> smoke versus life of undying. Yeah. It's 400 gold. You know, the smoke is a lot cheaper, but that cooldown has a high value. And Fly decides, you know what? I'll just take it. We're giving I'll him the credit. It. He also saw the uh, rocket coming his way. Yeah, that would he have definitely been a, was aware of Like a bad surprise, like on TZ, who was just farming up oh. the Ancients on the radiant side of the river. Uh, allows Team Secret just to walk up and execute him. That's a big kill. They had that great Observer Ward from earlier to CRTZ there. And they want the Tier 1 tower mid. But pay attention to that last team fight in mid, how ridiculous the damage output of EG is. RTZ going in for the flank gust. And then Samael runs in and casts everything he has. With that draw aura, Samael is destroying people in team fights right now. He has both damage types, he has so much of it. And Secret, they've got to find a way of dealing with this gyrocopter who's now building in towards the Aghanim Scepter. Never ending pickup control. Yep, so always get Fade Boy. Yep, so runs in, but remember, he's got that ability with Shikuchi just to jump straight back out again. Tombstone dropped down by Fly. So they got the team fight because of Mel. BKB Black had him working once again, but the throw range is dead, so this damage output is really not as high as he would really have liked to. They get the one for it. And Puppy, maybe a couple of others. Sentries are down, so they have really good vision. Samel jumps forward over on Yapso. Shikuchi's away to safety once more and away from the arrow that was flying forward. That homing missile was chasing the Tinker all the way back to base. Okay, is there anything more Samael than Blink Dagger Gyro? Is there anything like more like him than this? Super aggressive hero, item build that's just like, I'm gonna jump in your face. It's really good this game, by the way. I think it's a great item pickup from him to go for that dagger. Simply by having the draw aura, he can compensate for... Generally, when you make this choice, it's like, oh, do I get Blink or do I get a damage item? It's like, you've got both, as long as Drow's alive, so... He could just get in, get up close and personal, and do all of that damage with a flat cannon so fast. The scan lane. grabbed RTZ. The arrow flies forward. It won't be able to connect as well, but it won't matter. Mid one arrives, secures the kill. Now going forward two and eight. And this will allow Team Secret to take both the bounty runes on the bottom, but they lose both of them on top. I think RTZ might have been able to expect this was coming. It's the 25 minute bounty rune he has down toward the bottom lane that's already pushed in by Secret. and. Just easy punish for them, and they will get the runes down there. So two for two rune trade, but Secret get the core kill and the tower. And Fata is starting to get really big now. However, his item build does not allow him to deal too much damage just yet with Manta into BKB. But you understand why he wants that BKB when you see what the gyro is doing to him every time he tries to hit that tombstone. Yeah. So Mel is protecting it very well. And that seems to be a part of the reason they picked this gyrocopter, is every time they drop the tomb, they have this secondary team fight core that just follows up and makes it a really, really difficult choice for Secret to commit on it. Team Secondary Secret are committing now. to the bottom tier 2 tower. Fata's having this with no issues. Catapult behind them, and Evil Genius didn't get enough of a push up on top. They have planted aggressive Observer Wards back behind the tier 2 tower on top lane. But with March of the Machines, it's so hard to jump forward. And again, fly S4 and crits right behind him, ready to fight. But here comes Fata with a Starfall. They already get the grab, and the stolen tombstone from Yapsaw is going to make this a minion fight as the well, crit into the tree lines. He actually can live through this as S4. No, no, we cannot. S4 can't get the kills in time. Puppy's kind of stranded as well. Double buybacks coming in from Team Secret. They really want to win this fight, especially now that Samel doesn't have cooldown, doesn't have BKB, and Artizi can't even get up the bloody hill. The Lincoln Spear tries to protect him, but it will not protect from rockets. A double kill for mid one and two big ones as well. It was a, an expensive double kill though, to buy back two cores to get that one kill on Arteezy. Crit did buy back for EG at the very least for Secret there, but... Well, Arteezy at this point, he's kind of just dying too much. 
has to... You're, you're seeing the importance of not having BKB right there. It's, it's literally just spell after spell that is killing him off. Like a barrage of rockets coming in from the Tinker. He got hit by, I think, the Fate Bolt. There's even the aggressive aura from Yapsor and the Rubik. Like, all of this just adds up. And right now, Secret, until that BKB is out on the Drow, it's a great target for them. Remember, S4 as well went for the Lincolns. So he is also a target for all of their p just passive spell damage. Sure, you're going to block the spell steal of Yapsor, but no BKB on him. Puppy's in a little bit of trouble, but not too much. Fun is around the corner to help him out. And once this Agon Incept is over on, over on the Tinker, yeah, you wonder just how effective that Lincoln Sphere will be. Auto changing his mind going for the MKB. Okay. Probably reali he re he's realizing how imminent or how important it is to, to start getting some damage up. Ooh, it's it's still going to be tricky without BKB though. Fly knows the Observer Ward's on the hill. Four. It's covered by two Sentry Wards, S4. They're going to see him here. Well, they'll have to wrap around. Sentry Wards planted down by Puppy. They've got to get the stun control locked down. They've got it with see the arrows. Ya. And look at him just chain. It wasn't chaining stuns, it was chaining damage. But now Evil Genes has come out of their own smoke. On the run out of here. Necrofoss tries to be the one on the front line, but Puppy swapped back in. Double Tombstone is now being planted down. Aghanim Simple will finally arrive for the Tinker as he'll try and jump forward with the Moonlight Shadow. Puppy has actually outrun them. He has dust on him, but now he'll just stun up Fly. The Rockets, they're spamming through so heavily. Fly can't take this. The real Barrage. It ain't the Gyro, it's the Tinker. Not the ideal swap target, for sure, for crit. I don't know if you had another option there, but getting in the Ogre and those Moonlight, they did not have any detection between them, I think, or Fly. Oh, well, they did They did clip him with the dust, but nobody could follow through. Bit surprising there for EG not to get that kill, and Secret, they punish very well. It's something they've been doing a good job in, at in this game, is moving at these groups that find cores. They found Arteezy three times, I believe, or even four as a group. They found S4 twice. Yep. If these are the kills that are opening up the game for them, and if they do get this one, this is really big. Yeah, they're looking to try and take Roshan. Evil Genius is coming over right now. Remember that BKB is a low timer for Gyrocopter. He does Ooh. not want these fights to be extended. But with Sentry Wards, there's two of them planted down. On the dire side of the river, there's no way for them to really hide. So with Stolen Wave of Terror of Rubik, it's level three. They can actually get through Roshan a little bit faster. Far just got the damage output required. And Ace gives them all the sustain they need. So, yeah, this is Team Secret having both the Aegis and Cheese 30 minutes into the game. Each yep. year going to yield. They feel like they can't access the area anymore. Give a, a big advantage over to Secret here. This Aegis and Cheese is important. Obviously, the Cheese on Necrophos. Is there any... There's no Vessel on the Dire side at all, so Necro will be free to heal up fully with this cheese. They got no Vessel, no Urn, and Vengeful Spirit flies up building in for that. He's building in for Pipe. Yep. They're trying to find ways to negate the never-ending damage of the Tinker. But Tinker's getting stronger as well. Hit that level 20, he's got plus 8 of the Mars Machines, even with a Live Steal from the spell. Oh, they again. find an extra target. Crit just walks straight into them. He wasn't on a warning mission, he was on a hunting mission. They don't know where Arteezy is. Yapsor, so close to him. Arteezy has TP, he'll use it now. All the way up to top lane and far, far away. He waited really long. I wonder what he was waiting for. Commands. Huh. I think the only command there from everybody is get out. Oh, fly. Stay there for. He's deep warding. Mid one has to feel like, uh, yeah, there's too much pressure coming. They ping out off. the fact there was vision around. Uh, S4, I'll trigger the Lincoln Sphere, but both of those sentries are gone. So there's no more no more vision for Team Secret to pierce that Shikuchi. The goal now for EG is very clear. You look at their itemization, right? S4 as well as RTZ. RTZ finally gets his BKB. S4 is now working on his, so he will be getting BKB Lincolns, which is generally a pretty weak item build on Weaver. When you have the Drow Aura, you can you can still do some decent amount of damage. I. I have this feeling that S4 is regretting the Lincoln's purchase right now. I think he should have gone for a damage item straight into BKB. The Maelstrom BKB build that we've seen from him previously this tournament would have been really, really good this game. Uh, maybe he was hoping that the Lincoln's, in addition to protecting him from the Rube, it could have maybe been a clutch save against a Reaper Scythe. But that is really difficult to do in the heat of the moment in these fights. Yep. And now Yapsaw's got a Blink Dagger coming out in the Courier with the Yule Scepter. So this, this Rupik is becoming even more of a nightmare in the engagements, let alone the invisibility you're talking about. So Team Secret, they know they're the stronger team at the moment. They will push down mid lane, they'll oh. take the tier two tower. And I'm really starting to get concerned about just how much damage Samel can do in a fight. 
even though he's gonna get the satanic, his BKB is down to a six second duration. Yeah. Like, how is he meant to take these engagements when Team Secret seem to have this way just to back off the sustain from the death drop, but the tankiness that comes from the ogre, who is no longer just the meat packet that EG could pump into and kill pretty quickly. He's, like, he's got medallion, he's got urn. Oh, oh good they swap him. Has cheese. Found the target, he has cheese, so go shroud and then get the, the life back up again. Call down, commit a fly. He's going down so low. Look at the damage. He's walkers, but the flag cannon from Samail, he hits in like a truck. Ace is gone. Fighter is committing. The Starfall won't be able to kill off S4. The Rockets are following after him. He's got double and S4. He will survive as the Rockets just disappear. Look at the damage recap for that fight. How much was on him? Okay. He did 5.1k. His team combined did like two. I think it's going to get higher because Samael is not a 5k player. He is much more than that. That was some serious damage. This time around, Drow ready to fight. Obviously the BKB used for our TZ there as well as so the reveal of that Black King Guard. Paying off in a big way. They get rid of the cheese, they get rid of the Aegis and Secret. They did not even claim a tower. Let's see it again. So, Fly, you can take all the damage you want, but it all started with a swap onto Necrophos. Yeah, so he quickly gets the Yules off and does manage to pop his Ghost Shroud as well as the cheese and disengage, but just the amount of damage that's going into the back line and Tinker. Well, Tinker can't do anything for now, right? These BKBs, Arteezy and Samael are free to hit. Yep. And S4 will have his now too. He oh. just purchased it up. No buyback. But that is a really, really big item. Yeah. I think S4's goal in this coming fight is to isolate, just find the Tinker. If you can run in behind him, get bugs on him, and just hit him, he is out of the fight, and he has no way of fighting back onto him. Surely, Samael and Arteza can get the job done on the rest of the secret lineup in the middle of the fight. Oh, yeah, I was worrying about the six seconds, but six seconds was more than enough that time was for Samael to... Of yeah, he did all of it before the BKB ran off. He did 1k DPS. It's yeah. not bad. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fine. Good. It's fine. It's fine. Looking around uh, oh, the puppy. Roche pit, is Puppy coming closer, sentry for sentry? Uh, not even being a well, trade-off, because EG keep theirs up, and they instantly smoke. They have a feeling that Puppy and Secret have no vision up here just from Puppy's movement. That made, like, no sense for him to move up there if he saw EG's positioning, so they feel very comfortable with using the smoke, smoke of Deceit from that information, and they're trying to get a backstab move in here. He's oh, gonna a find great it. pickup. He's got Yul's as well as Blade again. Mouse, so, yep, there's your swap. This feels like a deja vu. Magic Missile will connect as the silence is making a couple of problems. And uh, some mail. BKB jumps forward. The flat cannon's already expended, but it won't matter when they've killed off Ace. A team secret. They got some distance. Now the BKBs for Evil Jesus wear off, so they pick up crit, look for a quick little revenge with a wave of terror. They'll get the negative armor out, not to mention the stuns. Chaining onto Fly. Mid one with a double kill. They'll kill the death tombstone. This is a really awkward place for EG to take this fight next to the shrine. Sure, they do get the Necrophos, but Ace buys so much time and he basically outlives the BKB of the gyrocopter. So when the big team fight stuff comes in, he already used the call down. He has no BKB and Samael has to back off, and that, therefore EG Ooh. can't really chase down anymore. And S4. Good read from C. Looks oh, for he one. found him. He'll actually jump in. Oh. Mid one TPing out quickly. Got oh. the re -arm off. And you need just a little bit more damage from S4. Yep. Any damage item there, and that's a dead tinker. And that just, it goes to show what can happen in the coming fights, right? If S4 does manage to pull this off, mid one knows he has to get the hell out of there. Might see him buy Ghost Scepter for value, perhaps. He did buy a BKB and straight up sell it, so he's changing his mind. Has the money for Hex, if he does want it. Mid one's actually very farmed in this game at this point. All right, it's like, changed my mind? Nope, didn't <laughs> change my mind. Effectively Team. just wasted 15 seconds. <laughs> but it's like, he, couldn't, he probably couldn't travel anywhere at that point. He feels like the map is really dangerous right now. Very Team. limited vision. Team Secret have actually given up on that whole Sentry Ward battle. They got a Gemma True side onto Yabso. So he's gonna be a critical uh, in his positioning, especially up against S4. That Shikuchi run through the back lines. Quick question, who do you think bought the gem? Uh, I'm definitely saying it wasn't Yapsaw. Correct. It's a hundred percent puppy. Yeah, it was. Y Yapsaw would never spend money on such an elaborate item. I feel like I call him out every time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Actually. You uh, want to include the one you played with him? It's just like, Yapsaw, can I not just buy you the gem every time? Getting flashbacks. Yeah, can you buy a gem? No, I'm 200 gold away from Lincoln's. Okay. <laughs> Moonlight Shadow is up as uh, Evil Geniuses. And waiting around the mid, the Wave of Terror, as well as the Fade Bolt from Rubik. Push the lane back a little bit further, and it's just a five man fight. We're, we're looking almost over the ravine that is the mid lane. Okay, that's an interesting line to draw. Go this way and walk into Team Secret. 
<laughs> S4 just quickly showing bottom and pushing out this wave a little bit. Or maybe, yep, he will do it again. Oh, Puppy is so close. And there's the third board. What finish it! Throws it down! The arrow will connect BS will swap him out. Arteez will be able to survive and get the guns back into mail. Turns on the power! After mid one, he got the big one! Will there be more buybacks? Ogre's already committed one. Ace gets the side buff. It won't be enough to kill off Arteez. The time lunch from S4, he'll even repair the damage. As Team Secret, they did double buyback. Mid one did it himself. But for the ward that was meant to actually be the greatest way the Team Secret begin the fight, it became the Achilles heel when they couldn't kill off. Crit's positioning was flawless. Oh. That swap just changed absolutely everything. If he doesn't get this swap off and Arteezy dies, the fight is really hard, but he swaps himself in, they get their BKBs off, so Mail gets a fantastic position with a three-man call down, flat cannon, he just blinks into them and, and lays in. And that's all it takes. Tinker, especially, being caught by Samail is really, really important for the outcome of that fight. Mid one probably felt very good about his position, but... Oh, well, Samail took advantage of it. 50 seconds until Rosham will respawn. Both teams should be back to having both ultis up. And you see Team Secret, they know what's coming in. Let's have a quick look at this fight again. Observer Ward goes down, Artiz is initiated on, and Crit waits for it. Even the stun flying in with the arrow, he knew. He was the bodyguard. This damage of the gyro. I, I'm very curious about the end game stats of how much damage Samuel has done in this game. Looks, these fights look pretty ridiculous. Oh, he's 11-0 and 12, by the way. All right. If you got him in your fantasy team, you're probably getting a lot out of this game. Well, right now he's worth 15.8, uh, which isn't too bad. But if you're a puppy man, he's over 20. So, uh, nice support pick. Yep. He placed the wards, whereas EG had Arteezy ward. <laughs> <laughs> Only once, though, I think. Should also flag too that the uh, gem of true side is still in the hands of Yapsol. So at the end of that fight, they're actually able to regather it. Yeah. Oh, did he even die on Yap? Uh, he was carrying it the whole time, right? Yeah, he, he got he got chased down. I don't know. If, I don't believe don't he, think died. he died. He has Nether Swap now, by the way. I'm not sure EG are aware of this. This is a really big steal to use in this situation. If if Necro gets jumped, you can see Secret baiting oh, it. They want them to go on Ace so they can swap him with Rubik. Two centuries, they saw the one in the mid lane, and look at Team like, look at Team Secret. They just go to the EG side of the river. They'll check in, they'll look towards Roshan, they're wondering where Secret is. And now Radiant is Dire, and Dire is Radiant. We've, uh, this is the new map change. They mirror it. Yep. The primary problem here for Secret is that their side lanes are more pushed than EG's are. But so, that's why you have a Tinker. Yep, he has to go and take care of that, but that leaves his team a bit vulnerable. They're checking out the rush with the arrow, nobody's in there. Yep. EG being very patient. This is classic <laughs> fly stuff, by the way. This position with these wards at this time and standing and covering the area. It's, uh, it's how OG won at least one of their majors. This spot right here. It's, it was their re really big comeback against uh, VP, I believe it was, in the Grand Final Game 5, was it? Is Puppy, tr is Puppy trying to bait? He's walking down to the mid lane, Rubik's gonna finally TP back, so they see the Drone Ranger, get the initial stun, Fata, they just nuke him with the swap, it won't be enough, the stun will fold him up, but now it's the mail, blink it, turn on the black cannon, damage, 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 the side wants to buy a little bit of space, they're able to kill off crit, so it is a two for nothing trade up, but the is still up and fighting, Satanic is burned and S4 was with him, holding the hand the entire time, but Puppy, the only one to go down for Team Secret. Fata survived because Drow was dead, as he would have died too, to uh, Samael's Jara, but just lacking that little bit of extra damage, and Arteezy, out of position, doesn't get saved fast enough by crit. Secret just take advantage of that situation and get at least an extra kill, but they surely would have lost to find some mail. Still does disengage and get out. He is such a big kill on the map right now. Mid one is just trying to get as much into himself as possible, so if they can, they bring in the damage, they bring in the sustain, something to uh, like enable them to survive some mail. I'm not sure if the Shiva is the right choice. So the armor is obviously extremely valuable, but I think Se uh, Secret and Mid One's goal in this game should probably be to play him outside of the fight and just chain hexing. If he can get the jump on the Gyro, the Drow, or the Weaver, obviously the Weaver with the Linkins will make it a bit harder, but they have had the tools previously in this game to get rid of that. So it's just fine, the sustain for now. Let's have another quick look at this. So Arteezy killed off really quickly. The Starfall from Fada, that's why the swap and everything else as she followed him up the hill. And it's the mail. Damage output is good. And if it wasn't actually for Ace, that goes throughout the Magic Wand. Brings himself up pretty quickly into live fly. 
Telekinesis. This actually gets to be a nether swap from Yamsaw. Flying. Two, two, He'll down. go down so quickly, but as you said, double tombstone is down. Yamsaw's hiding inside with Ghost Scepter. Yours up defensively up. He can't jump out of here. He's just sitting as the Undying in his form underneath Roshan. Wait, do they not have vision? Yeah, they don't see him. Then they actually keep giving vision over to Team Secret to rocket spam at Evil Geniuses. They get away from the double tombstones. They may be a little bit concerned about bottom tower. The creep wave took out the tier three tower while this was going on. A draw or a look at that siege creep just taking out like 10 percent of the melee rex hp in one attack i mean one it's like it's like if i laser this does it please miss he takes <laughs> care of it but that's maybe an opening for eg they're trying to bait this out arteza with the haste but they saw this rune getting picked up so they know something is up secret with the high ground position mid one needs to nudge more evil genius is backed off to their side as you said gotta stay hidden as much as possible evil genius is just checking with waveform Go Shroud Ace actually oh, thinks about checking it. Uh, yeah. Watch that Vengeful Spirit's positioning. His disc is on cooldown in front of the 50. Oh, mid so. one needs to shove in these side lanes. Right now, EG have no real threat. And then set, they should, yeah, they know it. They smoke up. They'll move down through the river. Looking for a target. Puppy is the Night Watchman up on the hillside. Do they actually break the smoke? Rubik, Yamsaw sitting in the trees. Smoke will break, oh. but a quick blink away. Yamsaw is out, and they get the pickup. If Arteezy dies, he won't. Chris had a swap and Black had it. Samal goes once again. Fada has to leap away. Ace is the sacrificial lamb. He'll side, but there's the heal onto the Vengeful Spirit, plus the hood to save him. Ace somehow is surviving through all of this. So much ability use, but no death. Somebody die already. <laughs> Never-ending fight. <laughs> Evil Genius is back into Roshan. Team Secret are coming over, but they're there way too late. Refresher Shan is available. Did you know that Draora line? Oh, oh. pick up. Reapsaur's not done just yet. The rockets are flying in. Ace in pretty close. He's got the protection. The tombstone is doubled down once again. So Team Secret, they have to find the distance. Puppy into the back lines. Goes to the sun over on Samael. There's no BKB on him, so they probably feel the confidence to fight, but there is no confidence. Puppy and Ace just get obliterated by Arteezy. Oh my god, did you see how fast they killed that Roche? Yeah. When you're at this stage in the game and you have one minus armor hero and you have three ranged heroes with that draw aura, <laughs> it's like they took half of Roshan down in three seconds. And that's the one thing they got out of that fight. Nobody died, but EG got the superior positioning on the map and they very correctly identified that they can grab this for free. And Puppy coming in, the one silver lining was that Undying in that moment did use Refresher Shard mm -hmm. to get those two tombstones down, so. No shard in the coming fight. You guys should see this moment once again. Yeah. So there's the pickup, Undying holding the shard. So refresher shard one, tombstone, then death tombstone. He was actually very close to getting a heal off on himself, and he might have lived there. And Puppy really wanted to make sure that Samel didn't do, his, do any kind of damage. He was actually so far away from the rest of his team, too. He walked in as a buffer in that situation. And they were, it looked like they thought they could maybe fight it, but in the end they had to back out. So, EG. Good grab for them. Uh, who's sitting on the Aegis? Aegis on the Weaver. Was cheese used or? Uh, I think it was. I can't find it anymore. It's in no one's inventory, so I'm but saying I cheese is notice. used. It wasn't stolen, right? No. no. Okay, so cheese was used in the middle of all of that. So only the Aegis to work with here for EG, but still pretty important to have on the Weaver in the coming fight. S4 can play very aggressively with his newly picked up Nullifier. He will be able to kill off the Necropost very easily after Ghost Shroud. Also give him a way of potentially isolating either the Tinker or the Mirana before BKB usage would be very nice. Fishing arrow from Mirana. And Samel has Daedalus with Aghanims. They actually have like, uh, so double sentries on Undying. There's dust on the Vengeful Spirit. But once it's Mirana, who is rapidly approaching 25, yes, Moonlight Shadow at ne ne negative 70 seconds. Team Secret can have so many ways to come out and try yeah. to fight. It's still, it's probably still going to take Fada five minutes or more to get to that level 25. So still need to. Similar to last game, they're kind of locked in their base now. They don't have very much map to work with. Puppy is standing still. Oh, is yeah, he he's to... he, he's uh... he's just hiding. Yeah, he's, he's all right. He's got, he's got nice wards up for Roshan, who's currently dead. Yeah. Well, he just wants some sort of info at this point. S4 can't find his opening. He was hoping Arteezy's push down mid lane would allow him just to chip away at the bottom range racks or any racks. They are opened up. Copy has finally left. He'd be back home. Speaking and of talents, big talent come out now from uh, Fly. Gets the tombstone attacks to destroy talent. 
Fox is going to be really difficult for Fox to deal with, even with the Manta. It does take him quite a while to get rid of that Tombstone. Need a little bit of extra help. And Evil Genius is... They've currently got Team Secret pretty much stuck inside their base. There's no real vision for Team Secret outside of the base, apart from the two Observer Wards around Roshan. But this means that Tinker TPing out to the lane, like we're seeing mid one do up on top lane at the moment, it's so risky for him to do, but he has to. Like, this is just that calculated risk. They need to be able to slip in behind the lines of EG, because that's one thing that EG are really not good at. They're not great at catching out the Tinker without setting up a trap, and they're not good at actually holding back the global pressure. Mid one can delay this game a very, very long time. Yeah, as long as he's free to get out on the lanes, he'll be fine. But maybe gonna see EG play some Tinker wards soon? Could be a possible solution for them. Yep. But they have to go pretty deep for it. They're gathered up on top lane, but that's a that's three creep waves and a catapult pushing towards their tier one tower, uh, tier three tower on the top lane. Someone will probably have to come back to deal with this. Yeah, they absolutely have to defend this wave. I'm surprised they're not going yet. Oh, they, they, they're committing they're paying for... it now with some mail. Maybe, maybe they are willing. No, Crit's they're not going. willing to buffer Crit's it. Going. They could let their tower take half of its health in damage there and let the waves take care of it. Look but. at this from Team Secret. Crit's gone, the swap is removed. There is an Observer and Sentry down, but Team Secret, they're looking for an angle to find. Do they actually know where EG is? Right now, this is EG's home. They're, they're, they're charging rent for this area. Ah, oh, the classic fly spot again. Yes. <laughs> And yeah, Moonlight Shadow, they'll bounce down. They're gonna find Crit moving down the lane. Nice little arcane rune that Samal's moving over for him. Oh, no, no, no. Crit's right next to him. The side comes down. Samal will die. And they look to get the follow up into Crit. Yaps are protected by the Ghost Hunter. Crit will go down. Final with a double kill. Mid one. He's underneath the tombstone for the BKB protecting him, allowing his TP out to be successful. S4 was trying to chip away at him. They get rid of the tombstone so Team Secret can stand here to fight. But they already want to retreat. Yaps are there in the mid lane. It was the Yules have to pick up a time lapse. S4 runs away as fast as he possibly can to the north. That rune bait, the arcane rune in the river, a bit of miscommunication it looked like as Venge was also walking in closely to the rune, so the swap wasn't a possibility there from Crit. For the first time in this game, he can't get the swap, and now they're yeah. definitely going to be forced to buy back Venge, maybe even the gyrocopter. They and need this to game do too, is right? really interesting again. s is trying to force in the top lane. If they can bring down the tier 3 tower, this opens up Team Secret to even take shrines of their own, or maybe the dream to leave their side of the river. Ignite spam from Puppy. The Marsh Machines give him the cover. Great swap back into the nullifier, but Ace, he's protected by the Aeon disc, so he just just moves away, Crit goes down again, now TZ swapped into the middle of the fight! The tier 3 tower will fall, TZ will buy back his life, he needs to be there to give the aura. The top lane is pushing in. Does Team Secret take the racks and back out? Can they do it in time? Tinker's got the defense duties under control, so 25 seconds before Samael is back to the world of the living. You've got Swarm in one second. That may slow it down. Who are they focusing on? They're trying to get both things. They have to take the melee racks right now. It's so low on life, and there it is. Team Secret, a full mid racksing, but they're going for more. They're going up for the top lane of racks. You've still got eight seconds for Samael. He doesn't want to buy back from this. You can take the tier three tower and then potentially retreat with the Master Machines. The cover is it's thick, it's heavy, S4 doesn't care, he runs into it, do they have the control? Not when he's BK beat up, this father tries to send his ground, he'll go down, but Samael is here, Samael the defender, he will hold him and kill him, a double kill, the call down, clipped Puppy on the edge, and Team Secret, did you just overstay your welcome? It's definitely going to cost buybacks the other way, and the biggest deal here for EG is that they did not lose the gyrocopter one, Samael still has his intact, so... Can go for a big play in the coming fight where maybe he buys back, buys boots of travel and reconnects with his team if he gets focused down this next time. But it just shows the importance of Crit's positioning in this game. The one time he's been playing almost a flawless game with his swaps, but this time he's out of position and it just, it has such a huge impact on the game that they get this one kill on Gyro. It's a full lane of it's a tier three tower and they force Arteezy's buyback as well as that of the Venge. Should so. flag the fact that uh, Rubik actually has the Venge swap still, and he, he still just completed it. an Aghanim Scepter. Good yep. It's Yapsor. So it's a long swap out. They'll have Necro available. But now it's going to be the continuous steals. They pick up, and he actually grabs the Weaver. Sentry Ward was down. That's why you can see him. Time will be available. But there's your jump in. Samel killing himself with the Rocket Barrage. And now they'll fire. Ace, he's still protected by that Aeon disc. Ezwar has to BKB. He doesn't have Time Lights available, so he knows he has to retreat back out of here. But with the Tombstone, they have the cover, able to do such a thing. Double buybacks were out Triple. from Team Secret. Triple, sorry. Yep. All three. Mirana. 
Necro as well as Ogre. They held their racks, but that was expensive. And now it feels like EG is one up on them again because of these buybacks. They still have the Samael one to work with. And I believe S4, yep, he has his. And 7,000 gold. That's not, that's pretty convenient to have at 50 minutes in. Sure. Well, he's working on a heart. I'm not, I'm not completely sold on this. Wait, for Samael? Or for the Weaver? S4. I S4. I think he's safe enough in his BKB that he could buy a damage it's item right now and just really lay into them when they BKB. Just find the Tinker and kill him. But it feels dangerous against the Necro, too. Yeah, if, if you're just down to a bit below half, you can die. But at the same time, maybe his logic is, okay, I'm going to be going in and out of the fights, and I can region up really quickly and come back with full. Yeah, but then Ace finishes up his Aghanim Scepter and drops the Scythe, and you're, and you're gone. It could also be a sieging plan that they want S4 to hit the towers, and then they can swap him out with the Venge if things get real bad. But with a heart, uh -huh. he's very difficult to open up on. He can take towers with Draw Aura. He, he doesn't even... See, he's, his damage item in this game is a nullifier. He still hits for like 320. So. Uh, I almost prefer him to actually get the Aghanim Scepter. Let Samael be that front line, so then you can get the Aghanim uh, time lapse onto him. Wouldn't have been a bad idea either. But uh, he did complete the harp. Totally done. So yeah. we have boots to replace, and that's the final thing for S4. Oh, look where EG are. Oh, it's, it's, it's the fly spot. Hello. Yeah, we need a swatter. Welcome to fly spot. Moonlight, Shadow, Team Secret. Have they learned the lesson of exactly where they are? Rockets are spamming out from Tinker as mid one defends from his own higher ground. Now Evil Jesus, they come out of their spot, but do they really? This is their area. Puppy's right on top of them. They'll swap in and oh they find the God. kill. Yapsaw just explodes. They move over towards Puppy. Samael found him. The BKB does burn from him, and Samael, he'll find him in the tree line. Ghost up does not protect Puppy inside that cooldown. He buys some time to get at least one stun off. And the Master Machine starts to lacquer up. No buyback, buyback on is, Puppy. No buyback on Puppy. Buyback was also burnt from Yapsaw, so only one more buyback available. This should be the Rush or EG. They're just waiting for it. 45 seconds. They have the Courier just sitting there waiting to get the information. And they will keep controlling the map. They can try to hit high ground, but I don't think they are going to give it a shot with only the Ogre dead. That's not enough to go for the Siege. It's nice for them that there's no Bloodlust, but still. The Tinker, as well as the Necrophos, can be quite the wall to pierce through. Also have to remember too, the fact that Team Secret do have that mid lane of racks up and running. So EG have to continuously nudge this in. Yep. But because they've basically positioned themselves on the fly spot, you've got top, you've got mid lane, always S4. in very close reach. It's impossible for S4 to die while pushing out this wave if they have the right position. They have level three swap and S4 has 3.6k health. 25 armor. So then it's like, uh, it's on mid one to add more pressure on that bottom lane. He has to get these side lanes out. Obviously very fearful of a Tink Ward up at the top lane. Yep. And when EG are missing like this, they know something else is up. But hey, Roshan, <laughs> one moment he's there and the next moment he's just, uh, I, I thought he was upgraded to be stronger. Yeah, and this would have been faster uh, a while back. Uh, back then it would have taken So, seconds. Aegis? is on the gyrocopter so he can be the front liner s4 he's got the cheese and refresher shot sitting in the backpack of crit for the moment and uh, he actually just gave that over it's in gyrocopter so samel will die he'll switch in the refresher shot and that's going to be so much damage double bkb for him double satanic and he's still got that daedalus ray to rock and roll and most importantly double flat cannon that oh, is yeah. really really strong on gyro late game since gyro lost that talent that gave him the extra flat cannon attacks on level 15 um it's it's fallen out of favor a little bit. It's still been a good hero from time to time, but with this refresher shard, those 12 attacks that he can get from two full flax, it's no joke. Team Secret are on total defense job now. Yeah, they lost all four bounties. That's to be expected at this point with the full control of EG. Actually, they haven't taken the top one. Maybe they'll go there. Maybe they won't. I think this is the first game that we get to cast during this whole TI that's going to approach the one hour mark. But now that I've said that, this may be the final push from EG. It is possible. See if they can do it in under the 60 minute mark as they are looking to barrel down mid lane. Fly already commits the tombstone up on the high ground. Who wants to come close to try and finish this one off? Remember, it takes a hell of a lot. Arrows fly forward, but the tombstone zombies, they just soak it up. The laser bouncing through. Samal now burns the BKB. Remember, he's still got the refresh shot. Nake is available. Ace, Aeon Disc is already going to trigger on him. So EG take objective, and they will reset to come back. Yep. They're going to wait for, maybe they're going to let Samal uh, heal up a little bit and go again. Actually, they gave the refresher shot to Fly. They might just go for it straight away before Secret are expecting it. Yep. So now there's no Refresher Shard on the Gyro for his secondary life. Oh, looks like Fly's holding on to it for now. 
might uh, wait to, until he has two, and then Sim if he dies, he has three. Samel actually needs more mana <laughs> as well, but he just found himself an arcane rune. Yep. As this uh, courier bringing some clarities, it's bringing uh, three mangoes. Three mangoes coming on the courier to bring Samel back up to fighting mana. Yeah. That's, uh, that's, that's a lot of gold. That's indigestion is what that is. 9,000 gold. I don't know if you can take that many mangoes. Arteezy is looking towards the top lane. Under the cover of his freshly purchased Silver Edge. Hoping for a target by Courier. Oh! Rares for everybody! All right, no items on it at least. Wait, oh, was that BD? S4? S4 trying to run straight through the middle. He did get the small mob, but it's distracted so they can go in through the top lane. S4, Irelia, Smoke and Mirrors. Laser will bounce around. They swap in mid one. Mid one's in trouble, and he's going to go down. Buyback gets available for him. He'll have to use it instantly as that call down black at him from Smell. It will finally wear off, and they haven't got enough of these kills to really make it work. They actually have to wait it out. There's so many, like, undead minions fighting around. Team Secret, back to what you hold dear. There's a melee rax on bot. Has force ready to take that, but looking for the kills in towards the mid. The laser making it so difficult to hit. Samael, finally he'll go down. The Aegis Immortal will burn. Team Secret, they're fighting, but they need to regenerate. Fly is still alive, ready for the fight. So Samael blinks himself forward, right on top of Ace. Then the Black Cannon, once again, with the call down. Ace will fall. No buybacks available. EG, underneath the Tier 4 towers, oh, are killing off Team Secret. But for now, Team Secret leads in some way. Hold the lines and maybe even find kills. Mid one's coming out, the gust from Arteezy, Yapsaw into the back lines, he's gonna find the kill onto Arteezy, no! Yes he does, but you've still got Tinker down, but it's in trouble, surrounded on all sides, Team Secret are done, they're dusted, there is no more, GG, evil geniuses, take out Team Secret, and secure themselves a top six position here at TI. What a great game that was. I think both teams played a really nice game, Overall, in the end, EG do come out victorious, but I think this is one of the best showings from Secret in this tournament, so they're definitely showing...